Спасибо. Да. This is more just a sit down video. <laughs> just chill and smoke. And yeah. I picked up some uh, homegrown and uh, yeah it's nice, it's mellow but obviously because I'm used to all that skunky sort of stuff you just sort of, yeah you get used to it so then you think it's, it's not bad weed but it's just this what weed should be and how it was before it just fucking got over chemically and just super fucking uh, uh, hybrid and more THC than it should have So I get it, I get it, <sighs> but it's just one of them ones. Right, okay, why am I really here? Why have I decided to make a video? <laughs> so basically, as you know, I've been uh, slacking with the uh, uploads, like I've been slacking. Uh, and it's a case of like, I've said before in life sometimes, like, there's things that's going on that's just, either I could film or I couldn't film, but either way, just I wasn't on the right vibe to film in the first place. So even if there are ch chances where it's like, oh, why didn't you make a video? It's like, uh, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I just don't. With my videos, yeah, it's always been like this to me. I don't just want to come on and just make a video, but purposely make videos for views, do you know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah, fine, there's lots of uh, good things that I say, and I'm aware of this, and there's lots of things that I've said, or do, or the way I've lived, or the places I've been, people can um, relate to, or find interest in, or whatever it is, yeah. But at the same time, <sighs> I just not feeling it. I literally I just not feeling it. And I think I just wanna be real and honest. Like I just wanna be honest. And life is not always great, which is obvious. Like that's for that's that's life. <laughs> I mean that's a very broad statement which doesn't really make sense because obviously that's just that goes without saying, but Obviously, I like to. I, I'm on good vibes, yeah, and I'm always doing my best to stay positive and staying blessed. And obviously, just like to do what I like to do. But at the same time, I live in England. Like literally, I live in England. So to a certain extent, you have to. Um, hmm, conform, I guess or adapt your behaviour in a way that's suitable to society for them to accept you. Although, everyone will tell you in the same breath, oh no, it's fine, do what you want to do, blah blah blah, no one's judging you, and even if they are, fuck that. It doesn't matter, man. Like, that doesn't matter. Like, that is that is the more important thing there. Like, it doesn't matter, because... No matter which side of the fence I sit on, right, it's... <laughs> It has both of its struggles, but obviously if you're if you're sitting on the right side of the fence in quotes and uh, you have struggles, well you're on the right side of the fence so you're still having a good time in life, even though there's still things for you to complain about. Whereas if you're sitting on the wrong side of the fence and you're having a shit time in life and everyone's against you socially because of how you are, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a lose-lose, there's no lose and win, like, do you know what I mean? So for me, it's 50-50. I'm a fence sitter, right? I sit on the fence about many, many things purely because I have sat both sides and had tunnel vision for both sides, especially in my earlier years of policing and obviously believing in law, believing in government, believing that the government could never do any wrong at all 
Uh, the police could never do any wrong at all. The police were all honest. They would never ever take corruption and bribes and things like that. It just didn't exist in my mind. Like, why would the police do that? They're good people. So for me, I've always had that grounding of the establishment and infrastructure and obviously the system, right? And I've believed in that system. And over the years, throughout my travels and working with people, thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, um, it's a case of like, well, you've got a good sort of broad perspective then on <laughs> society, do you know what I mean? And obviously, yes, my working experience was in England. Um, short time abroad, but primarily in England. Um, and English being my first language, I haven't really made an effort to get work when I'm abroad because it would have meant learning another language. So, for me, I just feel very um, difficult right now about the whole situation in life because growing up, yeah, I was always taught honesty is the best policy. Um, I wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't getting into trouble. I had fights when I was at school over racism. But I wasn't an antisocial kid. Like, you wouldn't catch me out on the streets mugging old ladies and being that little kid at the back of the bus playing music and telling older people to fuck off. Like, that wasn't me at 12 years old. Like, that just wasn't me. Um, I've had a good life, mate. Like, I've had a good life. I've had a good childhood. I wasn't non stop. Like, do you know what I mean? I've, I've had it alright. Like, do you know what I mean? So. <sighs> when I then have all of this opportunity um, and obviously you have a good grounding you haven't come up from a fucked up family you haven't been in care you haven't been in and out of jail all your life why would you then choose to go against the establishment and go against the system and try and make your own path even though there's so many down points to that lifestyle and there's so many hardships and it's just like, my biggest point is, yeah, I'm going on a bit, but my biggest point is the truth, right? And obviously I'm not, I don't want to be hypocritical. There are times when I've been dishonest. There's times when I've stolen. There are times when I have cheated. Do you know what I mean? And, I, and I've, I've um, used the situation for my own benefit and gain. Um, that's what I mean by cheat. So it's a case of like, I understand the dishonesty that I have done, like, and I'm happy to admit that, right, when I speak about the truth, so it's not like I'm saying, oh, the truth, the truth, but then I'm going lying, because I know that I've been dishonest in my life, right, but it's a case of, like, I am a very honest and truthful person, I like to just say it how it is, I don't like to sugarcoat it, and if I get into shit, then I get into shit, okay, yeah, afterwards I might bitch and moan that I got into shit for what I did, but at the end of the day, I wanted to say what I said, I said what I said, and that was it. Like, why should I have to take it back just because other people didn't like what I said? And for me, it's like, we're in this sort of world at the moment where if you're speaking the truth, then you're a threat. And if you're, if you're saying something that has got half some sort of sense and people can believe in, you're a threat rather than just saying senseless nonsense. And if I was to just tell a load of lies, you'd get more views, you'd get more respect, you'd get more people that listen to you. But they're not listening to you because they respect you in that way. They're not listening to you because they actually care about what you're saying. They're listening to you and acting on what you're saying through fear because of what you've said. So they're then scared. So it's just fear-mongering then because you're then just saying something, knowing that people are just scared of you and that's why they're not going against you. Do you know what I mean? So therefore, everyone is conforming to all the different notions what are happening now and do this and do that and take this and take that. But it's like, it's just through fear. It's not because people think it's the right thing to do. And that's my problem. It's like the right thing to do. And that's always been my sort of standpoint in life and my sort of, I don't know, I've just got integrity and I'm just not a coward. Do you know what I mean? But then that's now seen as a problem and that's now seen as, or you're, you're abusive, or you're threatening, or you're a bully, or, do you know what I mean, it's just, or crazy even, and it's just, I don't know, I'm just really, really struggling at the moment with, um, 
with how I should be, how I should be uh, seeing things and how I should move forward. Because obviously I know that I can have the nomadic lifestyle and jump from city to city to city to city, no problem. That's not a problem for me. I get it's a problem for other people because they've got to have a house and they've got to have somewhere to live and comfort. And oh, I don't want to be cold, I don't want to be wet, I need a computer, I need the internet. Oh, I get that, like that's the world we live in, that's how we've been conditioned. And there's people that are growing up now that have no idea a life without a smartphone, no idea, do you know what I mean, about a paper map. They go to Google Maps. So I can understand that if you don't know any better then... It's just open for education then, but the people that know better and they still conform, it's just, it's stupidity, mate. And I get it, yes, it's out of fear, so I do have to empathise with those people, but I can only empathise so far before I just lose my patience and enough is enough, and it's like, you're all fucking idiots. I don't see why I get so much criticism for being honest and just telling the truth and just saying it how it is. Like, I don't get it. And then, just because you've told the truth, you can then get in trouble for that. And it's like, how? How? How is that possible? Like, how is that possible? Uh, I don't know, mate. I don't know. And especially with the Julia Alpha Bravo, do you know what I mean? It's just a case of like... I don't understand, like, I don't understand why people are so stupid and why they are so open to believe, like, how is it possible? And I get it with social media, like, it's easy to spread a message, and if that message is a lie, then that's going to be detrimental, but it's like, how? How are people so stupid? And it's just like, the way the government just play on the tactics, so, for example, they're like, well, if you want to go to a nightclub, then you've got to have the Julia Alpha Bravo. Oh, well, if you want to go to a festival, then you've got to have the Julia Alpha Bravo. Oh, if you want to chill in a pub, you want to go to a supermarket. So they're just slowly squeezing, 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 squeezing the net to make sure everyone is having Julia Alpha Bravo. And it's like, why? Like, why? How? Like, how are people so stupid? Like, it's just like, how have some fucking balls? Like, when do we all become such cowards, mate? We've conquered this entire fucking world, mate. Like, literally, there's not one place the English people have not fucking conquered. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, now we look back on it in history and we think, oh, that's a bad thing. But think about how fucking strong we are to fucking just be able to fucking turn up to a nation and be like, right, you're fucking ours, we own you. So we have to use that as citizens in our own fucking country. We have to use that strength. Like, why have, where's all this cowardice come from? I don't understand. Like, how have people just become so wishy-washy and just flimsy? It's fucking, do you know what I mean? Like a wet lettuce, bruv. It's just like... Tsh. I don't know. I really don't know. Because people will criticise me. I say people, people, people. And people say, oh, stop talking about people. Don't say people. Who's people? People about what? Fuck them people. But at the same time, you say this, yeah? But it, it's constant, mate. It's not as simple as just like, oh, don't worry about people, mate. Like, it's not as simple as that, like... stay here anyway. I doubt they're going to fucking sit down and chill. I think they'll just go. how things are going and how things are in my life and obviously it's a case of like because I have so much to offer right like and I give a fuck 
about society. I give a fuck about humanity. Like, I actually care. And that is the problem. I don't care about money. I care about people and the truth and what's right and what's wrong. The right thing. And yes, there's no such thing as right and wrong. And the whole truth thing is like, okay, well, where do you draw the line? At what point can you tell a lie? And at what point do you have to tell the truth? Like, okay, yeah, I get it. It's a great area. But just to out and out lie to the entire fucking nation. I mean, yeah, the whole world. But let's just speak England. The entire nation. And people believe it. It's, it just makes me so worried. Because it's like, you're just surrounded by drones. Like, just drones. And obviously, I think I'm surrounded by people. And I'm not. It's just robots. Like, just robots that are brain dead. And they've got no fucking... And I get it inside you, but yeah, but I don't agree with it inside. I don't agree, but I've got to do it because of this, and I've got. And you make up all these fucking bullshit excuses as to why you have to fucking conform, right? But it's like, really, really. Oh, but oh my, oh but my work, and oh, but if I don't, I'm gonna get this fine, and oh yeah, but it's respect of other people, and blah blah blah. But it's like, yeah, but really, really. And then there's the excuse that I get the biggest year as to why people don't just get off their arse and fucking make their own life is the fact, oh yeah, but I have children, oh, but I've got kids and oh, I've got responsibilities and oh, blah, blah, blah. Exactly, okay, fine, I can understand that, yeah, I can understand that and empathise. I can't understand because I ain't got kids, but I can empathise with that to say like, okay, fine. If I come along to you and you've got a family and do you know what I mean and you have got a house and you've got do you know what I mean you've got to send them to school you've got to pay for fucking school uniforms school dinners you've got to fucking feed them when they get back you've got to take them on trips you've got to buy them this buy them that do this do that do. I get it right so it's it's all very well me going up to that person and then telling them oh don't go to work anymore or oh you should just travel or you should just fuck off the system and not conform to them and just get a fine because I understand that could affect your family life right but at the same time this is where the cowardice comes into play because that makes it even worse because if you've got kids and you've got a family why would you want them to grow up in a fucking society like this why would you want them to grow up accepting that thinking that what we're going through now is normal why would you want that like why would you want that for your kid and like i say i don't have kids so i can't talk as a parent but for me it just don't seem logical like it just doesn't seem logical And I'm sorry, like, this is a thing, we're all just trained and designed for comfort. You have to be comfortable, you can never feel upset, you can never be offended, you can never feel sad, you can never feel, do you know what I mean, a little bit quirky one day. You can never be startled by things. Why? Like, that's life, like, it's up and down, there are loud noises, there are loud people, do you know what I mean? There is roughness, there is violence. That's the point, like, that's how it goes. It's just a mishmash of everyone together on this planet. It's going to be like that. So you can't just say, right, if this happens and you feel offended or you're upset by it, then you should complain. Why? That's just life, mate. Just move on. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like people that fucking, oh, I hate this TV program, ban this TV program. Just don't fucking watch it. It's as simple as that. You only give it power by watching it. If they get zero ratings, they cancel the show anyway. Like, do you know what I mean? Just don't fucking watch it. Like, do you know what I mean? You don't need to fucking complain about it and get the network. Oh, you should cancel this. Why did you play this, bro? Just don't fucking watch it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just fucking... Fucking just have a backbone, mate. Just have a backbone. That's all I'm saying. It's been a while, yeah, since I fucking had a little moan and a rant, right? But it's just a case of sometimes it's that's that's people. Yeah, that's people, because obviously I can blame people, but then at the same time, that's me also fucking whimpering, do you know what I mean? And it's just sometimes I've just had enough, mate, and it's just, there's little times, yeah, I've got to be careful saying I've had enough, because that's what I said before, and someone texted me to the old BTP. Anyway, it's just them little things, yeah, and it's just like, 
and then every time I notice it, and then I'm just like, no, nope, it's fine. And that's me saying, stay calm, walk away from the situation. And of course, if you have confrontation with someone, yeah, you should walk away. It's better to always just try and leave the situation than start beefing. Nobody wants beef. What is the point in beef? There's no point in beef. But at the same time, it's a case of like, you got a fucking, oh, mate. That we, we are... Just one more bit. I need to collect my thoughts, mate. Because this is a serious topic and I don't just want to mumble on it. <sighs> Let's bring it back to the present moment. The present moment, I'm sat by the field. With loads of trees. Beautiful greenery. I appreciate where I'm at right now. I appreciate the fresh air and I appreciate the fact that I'm in England on a worldly view if you think I'm a worldly view because I understand people have had it a lot worse however way things are going, I'm just not convinced that this whole fucking just be mute and just be silent and just fucking live in a bubble, like just not feeling it. And I just feel like quality of life that you have in England, regardless of what we have in terms of schools, education, hospitals, all of that sort of stuff, is fucking shit, well, literally, compared to say Mombasa, for example. Now. I use Mombasa as an example because I've actually been there. Now, Mombasa, East Africa, Kenya, bordering, well, it's, it's on the coast, so it, it leads off into the Indian Ocean, but Kenya borders Somalia, Tanzania, and uh, Uganda, east. But Mombasa is on the co coast, port town, real big ports. But there's like loads of people there, like loads of foreigners there, and like it's just it's a good life. But my, the point is, yeah, Kenya is a very rough country, right? It's a very rough country, and I don't know about now, but when I was there, this it was stable, but there was a lot of unrest, right? There was a lot of unrest, and there was. Um, Okay, right, so, before I say this again, okay, no, let me say the story and then I'll tell you afterwards. There was, like, uh, attacks on malls and things like that. Bombings, fine, I'll use the B word, fuck it, bombings. And, uh, things of that nature, and there was a bank robbery as well, and the police basically just <laughs> killed all six bank robbers on Moy Avenue and just left them out and just had, like, tape. And left them out in the baking sun. 
to fucking just rock, basically. In other words, don't fuck with us and don't rob banks, as an example to everyone else, right? And when I say these stories, right, because I've spoken to people and they've asked me about my travels and they've been genuinely interested, they've been genuinely interested because if they haven't travelled themselves or they'd like to travel, it's nice to speak to someone that has travelled to get some advice and travel tips, right? However, sometimes you could be overheard by someone else i.e. someone in the military and I'm not saying all military guys are like this because I've done private security and a lot of um, military go into private security as well um, and policing but so not all not all military uh, personnel are like this but some of the soldiers understandably get very heated and very upset if you mention um, attacks or if you mention when you've gone to a country and it's been unstable and there's been unrest and the bad shit that goes on because that is their job they see it day in day out they've lost friends they've had friends maimed and things like that and that's something that hits close to their heart so when they hear conversations like that they would much rather just not talk about it because it's just too painful whereas me i'm on the other end of the scale where i feel people should know what goes on and it's not to say i'm oh look at me because that's how sometimes they take it do you know what i mean but for me it's just like sharing my experiences and the comparisons of life to help people understand as to why I'm so flippant and I do get a bit annoyed with the way things are in England because it's just like, Psh. anyway, with that being said, that's just about me telling the story now, an example of the people, the types of people, why I get hesitant about talking about these sort of things that would get angry with me. But moving on to the next part of what I'm trying to say to you. So yeah, all of that happened, yeah, but even... When all of that was going on, even though my tattoos were fucking rookety as fuck, literally, fucking the police were corrupt as shit, like literally, they are fucking dangerous, like literally, there's no fucking electricity in some places, it's just, oh mate, you'd go there and you'd be like, sensory overload, like literally, sensory overload, but the quality of life is like, so much better, because it's just like, oh, okay, fine, yeah, okay, fine, you've got all of that, yeah, and this is what people don't understand, yeah, okay, you've got all of that, but... When you go back there, yeah, the quality of life is so much better. Okay, so for example, the sun, right? You've got fucking 35 degrees plus, yeah, in, in, in the daytime. Like, literally, it's hot. Then you've got, obviously, the Matatu, which is like the rookety bus, but that's all part of the fun of it. You can just hop on this bus and you just fucking pile on. Everyone's just piloted. It's a seat 12, but holds about 24, right? The most I've ever had a, a Matatu that seats 12 is 38 people. No, 36 people, sorry. 36 people in one fucking Matatu, which is a bus, a small bus. So... Everyone's just piling people on. Babies are being plonked on your lap. Mum sits in front, fucking shopping comes in, and you just sat there with a baby on your lap. Like, what the fuck? Like, do you know what I mean? Imagine sitting on a bus in London, and the mum goes to the back of the bus, plants her baby on, 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 on your lap, and then sits on the front of the bus and chatting to the driver. People lose their shit, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? So, like, the quality of life and the things that you experience is just so enriching. Like, you're so much more connected with people. And w another thing to prove what I'm trying to say to you so you can understand is that even though I see this and I'm sometimes it was really hard for me to see some of these things because I was like oh fuck that's really shit or oh fuck like do you know what I mean and like you, you'd you be really like you'd see a load of street kids and then and you'd be buying something at the kiosk and they might come over oh hi uncle blah 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 and you'd get them something do you know what I mean you'd buy them something and it's not to be like oh I'm a foreigner look at me I'm buying street kids food and look at me I'm the Samaritan no it's just a case of like you see these things and you're like fuck what the hell it's automatically you're like shit like I have to do something because I know I can like because nobody else is doing anything so why cannot why can't I and then after a while slowly slowly you begin to realize that's just life, like, that's just how it is, so it's not to say you stop helping people, but you stop feeling guilty, and you start to uh, in, uh, be enriched, and enriched, and empowered, at the fact that everyone is so resilient, and so happy, and so willing to help each other, and so willing to come together as a community, and stand up for one another, even though their surroundings, on the outset to a foreigner may be like oh my god how are you living this way but everyone's happy everyone is happy but yet you come over here we've got suicide rates we've got alcoholism we've got people addicted to drugs why we've got everything why because the quality of life here is so shit because you're just confined 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 and it's all an illusion mate 
everything is all nice and it's all set out nicely like a video game so therefore on site it's like yeah but you've got parks you've got roads you've got this and you've got that and you've got hospitals and you've got police service and da 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 but yeah when you actually break it down and you go into the belly of the beast and you actually see things for what they are and you go in with your eyes wide open you realize actually yeah it's actually better like do you know what i mean they do have it better and you can get like, the wildlife as well naturally all of the wildlife i saw all of the big five when i was in africa i saw uh, what is it? A hyena, cheetah, um, lion, elephant, and what's the other one? Leopard? Is it leopard? Leopard. I think. I think that's the big five. But I saw more animals. But I saw all of them. Giraffes as well. I saw zebras. I saw all natural in the wild. Just like imagine, like I'm here now by this little fit by this field. This is my current scenes. So imagine all of that. You're just looking out, yeah, and it's all you're seeing is just giraffe and zebras but in the thousands mate in the thousands and it's just like all of them things like that them natural sites that is life that is what is actual living okay now let's take it back down to the local life we're still in kenya now local life right is similar in uh, other african nations but specifically ghana and kenya is what i've seen and what i've experienced and especially kenya with the local people because ghana was i was working there so it wasn't i only spent two weeks actually seeing local stuff but the rest of it i was there for four and a half months but the rest of it was all working again with the government but yeah so it was a case of like 2018 now we're in kenya and the food right Food is all fresh. Like everything you get is all fresh. So the, the fruit has never travelled more than like what a mile, two miles from where it's been picked from the tree, and then it's obviously in the kiosk or in the in the market, and then you buy it, and that's it. And you obviously you don't live never like a mile or half a mile away from the market. So that in total, that fruit has done the journey of what like two and a half miles. <laughs> Do you know what I mean compared to like what? six seven eight thousand miles ten thousand miles depending on which country you live in and how hard it is to export things do you know what i mean and then they want to market it in the supermarket when it gets here fresh fruit no it's not no it's not but yet, over there everything is fresh meat as well people actually don't eat meat they're vegetarians like do you know what i mean they're vegetarians but meat is available like meat is available but the staple food is ugali do you know what i mean the state which is um it's kind of like a mashed potato, a very thick, doughy mashed potato. And you can eat that with stew and or a dumpling, like a dumpling. But stew, you can eat that with. And also, yeah, you can have uh, meat. So beef, goat meat is beef. So you can have it with beef or chicken, with anything. But mainly, it's just soup and, and that's it. Do you know what I mean? Meat is a commodity. Like, it's a commodity. There's no excess of just slaughtering animals on mass and then packaging it and then just put it in, in a shelf and then maybe someone will eat it and buy it. Maybe someone won't. Just for the money. Do you know what I mean? Again, I went down to the market. I've seen the girl, this girl. Went down to the market. She says to me, oh, I want to cook you dinner, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, I want chicken and rice and blah, blah, blah. But it was like a special Kenyan dish, but it was with chicken instead of the goat meat. She says, okay, we go down to the market. They, I said to her, right, I want chicken. This is to the woman. I said, oh, I want some chicken, please. She says, okay. I said, a nice, nice chicken. She says, okay. She goes out to the back, yeah, of the market. She comes back round and she hands me a live chicken. I look at my girl. I said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I said, what the fuck is this? Because obviously, my fucking English Western brain is used to seeing meat all packaged up. Do you know what I mean? But again, fresh. That is what you call fresh chicken. Here you go. Here's a fresh chicken. And then took it home done what it, well I, did, I didn't my girl did fucking done what we needed to do with it and that was it it was fucking in my belly do you know what i mean like everything is fresh so yes okay fine yeah they've got no infrastructure and blah 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 and you might not have electricity fuck it we've got fire do you know what i mean fuck it we can grow our own fruit and veg fuck it we can keep chickens out in the yard we can herd goats we can herd cows like we can produce everything that we need off of the land and it works it works like, it's not like they live like this and they're all dying still. It actually works and they're healthy. Do you know what I mean? People in Kenya live to well into their hundreds. Do you know what I mean? My, my, I met a woman who was 113. My friend, Felix, his, his um, grandma, his great-grandma was 113. And even stories of people living to 115, 116, 170. Bruv, seriously, they live for a long time. If you go way out into the bush, bruv, they live for a long time. And that's because everything they eat is fresh. There's no chemicals whatsoever at all
And that is the sort of things, what I say, the quality of life. I don't think, oh, my quality of life is good because I can go on Facebook and, oh, I've got a smartphone and, oh, I can wear a designer jacket. Oh, so I... No, mate, that's not quality of life, bro. Because I can have all of this stuff, but my mind is still fucked because of where I am. If you want to come over here, yeah, and make money from another country, I can understand. I literally, I can understand. Because you obviously, you come over here, the wage is a lot higher. The wage is a lot higher. I've said this before. I was chatting to the soldiers in, in, the, in the compound where I was working on the first half of my trip before I got kicked out for the week. So before I got kicked out of the country, I was chatting to the soldiers. And we were talking about wage, because obviously I'd done security for a while. So... We was talking about wages and what they earn in one month I would earn in one shift. So when you think about that, you can understand why people are coming over because they can make their money just even a year here, but they don't. They stay for like eight years and then when they go back to their country or they send money back to their country, their family have something to live on and they have a reasonable lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? Because they're getting money that's from England and it, the conversion rate is higher, so it's a lot more money that they'll be getting compared to if they were to work a Kenyan job and then obviously just send money to their family. It wouldn't be a lot. So I could get that. And it's the same for Eastern Europe as well. well literally. Although, again, let's not fucking just generalise and talk specifically on places that I haven't been to but from people that I've met from there and travelling around and especially being in Europe and obviously the Eastern Europeans coming over working with them as well me and their families if, I'm, I've, if I've gotten good terms with them and been friends with them and going into that culture then that's how I would be able to experience it but otherwise I haven't been to those countries I don't pretend to be someone come not and this is another thing people will think oh just because I'm preaching that oh suddenly I know the world and I've been no but I've got half a brain to investigate things and obviously take an interest and care. You know what I mean? And I will get there. I will get there to those places. Okay, so now I've had that little mini rant, let's bring it back to England. Because I, I know some people lose me when I talk about abroad and I talk about things on a worldly... They lose what I'm saying because they when I talk about it on a worldly view and on an international level, so I think about English or, or Western world problems in in a, in a in a international way of, like, well, other countries. And it's not good to do that on a daily basis like, and I can't do that on a daily basis because like I say I am in England and it is shit <laughs> like do you know what I mean yeah okay we've got everything but I can't say well I've seen this so therefore blah. no that's not what I do that's not how I educate that's not how I like to discuss things because this is not helpful this is not helpful because if you've never seen it it's like you can't talk to me about astrology because I don't know nothing about astrology so you have to reason me you can't say well in space we can do blah 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 and next word because I don't know nothing about space and I've never been to space so therefore you'd have to start with something that I know about that I can relate to and then work your way up and use that as a base point to say this is what's happening but just with this situation but it's the same premise and it's the same with the quality of life situation So with England now, it's a case,
Okay, so, oh bloody hell, it's getting dark. I just have to hold you. And this does it. Step out into the light a bit. Uh, I'm gonna have to um uh, I'm gonna have to continue on a fucking I'm gonna have to continue in two parts, which is annoying, sorry, because uh I was trying to turn up the brightness so I could see the fucking picture better and then fucked it up. I like to just upload one block video rather than fucking cut, 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 cut. I just like to just give it raw. If there's pauses, there's pauses. But anyway, it's okay. I hope you understand. So yeah, what I'm saying is England now. When I speak about these things, yeah, and I have these little moments, sometimes I feel it's point not pointless, but sometimes I feel, oh, maybe I should just be quiet, maybe it's too much, maybe blah, 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 maybe this, maybe that, maybe this, maybe that, and that's the point. That is the fucking point of why I've made this video. I keep told, oh, just don't worry about it. Oh, just be quiet. Oh, just leave it. Oh, it's fine. Oh, yeah, well, uh, oh, oh, dear. Oh, where's your fucking backbone? Surrounded by fucking cowards, mate. And I'm not going to fucking be a martyr or fucking purposely put myself in a situation where I know I'm going to get fucked up. I'm not going to fucking do nothing mad or something crazy or fucking endorse people and support people that just do fucked up things. Do you know what I mean? Thinking they're making a difference. Because you just know you're just as bad as them. At least you're just as bad as them if you do things like that. And it's just gotten too much, mate. It's gotten to the point where it's like, why? Why should I just be quiet? Why should I just be silent all the time and just be on mute and just, oh, no, don't say that. Oh, don't do this. Oh, just be like this and then it's fine because then it won't be a problem. Oh, just, just accept it. Just accept it. <sighs> and there's some people that say to me, oh, and it's annoying because it's like these people, yeah, I consider them as kind of close, you know what I mean, and they just say to me things like, oh, yeah, but it's like, just, just, just accept it, like, just accept it, and like, if I have issues with the police or I get nicked, and it's like, oh, yeah, but just get arrested, like, if you know you haven't done anything wrong, just get arrested, just get, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? like, this is what I mean, like, <laughs> oh, mate, they just, they're so enslaved, bro. and it's scary because these are people that I would consider friends, mate, like, I would consider, like, oh, yeah, okay, fine, we talk on a level, blah, 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 and it's like, you, you, you're, you're a drone, and it's like, they're right in front of you, bro. it's like, fucking sleeper cells, bro. it's scary, like, it actually scares me, and it's like, is that how deep I see it, and it's like, yeah, but why are you scared, don't let it scare you, you, in life, you just have to be happy, and don't worry about it, blah, 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 because they're, they're always gonna be there, so, okay, right, put it this way, right, I'm not a fucking politician or some fucking, do you know what I mean, Jesus or fucking claiming, oh, follow me, oh, I know, oh, listen to me, no, 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 I just fucking know what I'm fucking talking about, mate, for me, 
And if you can relate, then you can relate. If you think I'm talking some half sense, then fine, that's great. But otherwise, the majority of people, mate, they just they, they don't hear these words that are coming out of my mouth. It doesn't compute or comprehend. It just doesn't register at all. Not a single iota what I'm saying. Like, it just, they're just completely enslaved. Completely enslaved. It's constant, constant lies. Like, constant lies. It's just this what I'm saying about the truth, mate. And it's like, okay, fine. From the government's perspective, it's like people don't need to know the truth because blah, 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 blah. And I get it. I do get it. I, I actually get it, right? Because in policing or security, if there is a problem, if there is an incident, like a major incident, the last thing you do is tell everybody there's a major incident, right? That is a big no-no. You don't use a radio, you don't do nothing. And it is, a, is a, for example, like missing children. Let's forget the terrorism thing. Missing children. The last thing you do, well, okay, fine. You, you, they call it um, Mickey Mouse. That's what they call it. But the last thing you do over the radio is say, oh, we've got a missing child, blah, 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 this name, this name, blah, and blast the details over the radio because you don't know who's listening. And that could cause then mass panic. And that's the reason why they, they do it. But obviously, okay, missing child is just isolated. Obviously, you'd, you'd speak to the parents and you'd let them know. But you, but again, for security, you wouldn't, if you're standing in a crowd and you haven't got an earpiece in and that blurts out, over the, you just wouldn't do it because it causes mass panic. Oh, there's a missing child. And then you've got people now looking for a kid, now trying to solve that situation. Oh, security have said this. Oh, the police have said there's an incident. Let's try and see if we can do something about it. Oh, we don't need the police. We can get him ourselves. We know where we're going. And that is why they stop it. But on a mass level, if there's a, if there's a fucking bomb in somewhere, yeah, Fuck it. Do you know what I mean? It's, they got me scared to say the word bomb. It's like, why? Bomb, 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 bomb. So fucking what, mate? You do it every day. Why are you so afraid of that word? Why? Because that's what they're doing, mate. And that's the truth. So as soon as you say that word, that flags up because it's like, oh, what are they saying? Are they exposing us? Yeah, I am exposing you fucking wrongins. <sighs> but I'm not, though, am I? Because you've got fucking unlimited resources just to put out your shit. So regardless, this video will get buried anyway. And that'll be that. But I don't care, mate, because I'm not out here posting on fucking the internet to get my message across. I'm just posting for the sake of it. I don't use my fucking channel to get my message across. If I want to get my message across, you'll see me in the fucking street. Like, that's where I go. I chat to people. I don't fucking talk on this. Don't give interviews. Don't do nothing, mate. So anyway, if there's a bomb somewhere, the last thing they'll do, I mean, you're not supposed to use your radio anyway if there's a bomb threat because obviously it can trigger it. So again, it's radio silence. But the last thing you do is tell people there's a bomb, everyone leave, blah, blah, blah. Because again, mass panic. And then you're going to get trampling, you're going to get crushings and people will die before the bomb has even gone off trying to get out of the building. So that's why they don't say anything. So I understand why it's important to withhold the truth if you don't want to call it lying. I understand why in some situations it's important to withhold the truth. And if you're dealing with national security, even more so because the last thing you want if there is a national threat to the country to tell everyone and everyone just goes into a rampage and like I said we would kill each other before we was even attacked so that is why they do lie or withhold information if you don't want to call it lying but with that being said how far do you take it like how far do you take it
Okay, right. Another thing is, yeah, about not having regrets, but feeling bad for going on. Because if people don't know about something, yeah, whatever the situation may be, yeah, but specifically with um, government actions or things that go on in other countries or poverty or crime or whatever the situation may be, if someone lives in a bubble, yeah, and they're completely green and they didn't know about that, and then you tell them about that and then they get upset about that, they had not witnessed it or seen it until you had told them about that. So therefore, indirectly, you have then affected someone and caused someone to psychologically, I guess, experience what you or someone else has been through when you wouldn't have experienced that. So therefore, they could say they're affected by that, right? But for me, it become it, so therefore it's a case of like, just live your life. And if people are happy to just be blind to what's going on, they're happy to just conform to lies and get themselves Julia Alpha bravoed, bravoed up, do you know what I mean? Then fine, do you know what I mean? Because if that's what they want to do, then they should be allowed to do that. And, and be ignorant and just um, and, and go into the slaughter, basically. The, the, if that's what they want and everyone's just being led to the slaughterhouse and jumping off a cliff, who am I to say, no, guys, don't jump off a cliff if everyone is, that's what they're all lining up to do. So, if, do you know what I mean? It's impossible for me to be like, no, stop, because everyone is lining up to do it. So some people must be right if everyone's doing it. But it just means you've got loads of people that are brainwashed and doing the wrong thing. <laughs> so it's like, Again, like, how do you draw that line between affecting someone and actually waking them up and opening their eyes to another path? Because I have confidence in people. I believe eight times out of ten, at least, if you was to explain to people in a reasonable, rational way, not in a radical way or an extremist way, but in a reasonable way, calm, cool, collected, with credible facts, credible information, things they can relate to, people are alright. Like, people are alright. Like, I've travelled without no money, mate. I've been homeless. Yeah, okay, people are shit and it's a shit time when you're homeless. But people are alright. I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be alive today if they weren't. Do you know what I mean? So people are alright. But it's just, they're just so easily led. And they're just so, I don't know. I don't know how, how it happens. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm not a scumbag, mate. So it's not in my psyche to figure out how I can lead people in the wrong direction and lie to the masses. Like, it's not in my psyche. So like I say, it's the point of, yeah, I can sit here and just say, right, okay, because I'm okay, everything's fine in this immediate moment, I'm making my video, I've got fucking trees around me, I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere, everything's fine. So therefore, I shouldn't be concerned about anyone else on the planet, because, well, I'm alright. No, mate, that's selfish, and if you are like that, then fine, you should be allowed to be like that, because that's your choice. But I don't see why I should also become a cunt, just because everyone else is a cunt. Why should I become dishonest just because I, everyone else is dishonest? Why should I be a coward just because everyone else is becoming a coward around me? And why would I be seen as a wrong person for not becoming a coward? Like, this is what I'm saying. When has it become right to be a coward? When has it become right to just lie and just fucking read into lies? Even if you believe and know it's a lie, but you still believe into it. You still follow it. Oh, I know it's not right, but I'm still going to do it anyway. Why? And the reason why I go on and on and on is because it comes a problem for me when in my daily life, not when I read things on the news, not when I just jump on a bandwagon because of what I've read, which is what everyone else has done, when in my daily life it becomes a problem to live the way I want to live. When I become a problem, when I become criminal, when I become part of that outcast in society, 
because of the what things I say and because of the way I live. Not causing harm to people, not causing any damage, not destruction of property, not trafficking children, not dropping bombs on nations, just simply speaking that things are not right at the moment, something isn't quite right. I think we should band together and have conversation and be a bit more unified and, and be at one with each other and love one another. When did that become a problem? When do you become a bad person and a wrong person for saying that? When do you become an outcast? Why do you become an outcast for saying that? These are all the things that I put, I put out into the atmosphere I want to know. And that is why I go on. Because in my daily life, I don't just pick up a newspaper or pick up my phone and start reading a load of shite online and say, right, I'm going to make a rant. No. It's just one of them ones, mate. It's just one of them ones. I'm also wanting weed, like literally. I have got weed, but it's not fucking strong weed, so it's just a bit like, ugh. Like, it's getting a bit tiresome now. Like literally, I just want to be stoned, and I'm not. I literally am not. So that's just, it's one of them ones though, because it's like, yeah, it's good to have a break. It's given me that tolerance break, so I see it as a positive thing, because it's not good to just smoke strong weed all the time, mate. It does do my brain in, like literally, it does do my brain in. My knees are getting better though, my lips fucking still fucking stinging, but my knees fucking alright. They still sting, but they're covered over now, and I can put pressure on them and kneel on them. Whereas before I couldn't even do that. I'm putting fucking trousers on and jeans, oh my god, the stinging. But yeah, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy I'm alive and I ain't broken no bones because I did get hit by a car after all. <laughs> Literally. Right, hold on. I'm just going to roll another. That's what I mean. you just got to fucking keep smoking them because it's like... That's what they call daytime weed because it doesn't get you stoned. <laughs> you got nighttime weed or you got daytime weed. And it came as fucking this little shake as well. The bag was full, mind you. But yeah, it came as shake. And it is weed. Like, it's definitely weed. It's weed. I like, don't worry, it's weed, it's just fucking, it's just proper weed, innit, it's just the old school, homegrown, like, do you know what I mean, smoke 20 joints and you'll still be alright. Whereas if you just smoke 20 joints of Super Silver Haze, mate, you'd be fucking mashed, even if you're a fucking stoner, you'd be blazed, whereas you would not be blazed after smoking 20 joints of this. Even if you don't even smoke weed, like, it'll just be like smoking a fag, basically, with a buzz. That's how I describe it. This is fucking. Is it that sword? Is it that sword? I think it's this sword. Yeah, it is. And it's right. like there's the slightest gust of wind man, it just took it away. It's cause I'm using elements, rice papers. And they're just super thin.
I'm also trying to use the light on the phone. Yeah, that's not going to last me until tomorrow. That's literally a couple of spliffs tonight and that's it. Anyway, I've said my piece. I've always have said my piece. I'm going to say one more thing, right? <clears throat> when we act like drones, okay, not drones, that's such that's, that's fucking. Right? When we allow ourselves to become puppets, we make a mockery of everyone who has fought and died. 
for us to be able to live the way we want to live. So when, without any resistance, we just give up that genuine freedom, not just physical freedom, but also mental freedom as well, when we just hand that over without any resistance, it makes a massive mockery. And that in itself is disgraceful. And then obviously, even though you're just so willing to give it all up, I'm still here giving a fuck saying no actually maybe we can there's still we can we can pull the reins <sighs> But do you deserve the people deserve people to stand up for them and people to fight for them when they're being led astray the people deserve that if they're willing themselves to just give up their freedom without any resistance they're willing to be enslaved <laughs> stay blessed stay lean and peace